The, the reason is, and, and people might be scratching their heads, and it, because, as we can see, Trump is only four Electoral College votes away uh, from, from clinching the presidency, and Alaska is three, and Maine's second electoral district is one, and that would take you to 270. But Alaska, we haven't got the vote, all the votes in uh, yet, and we can still see that there is still a substantial amount of vote to come on the board. And so until the networks are absolutely convinced, just numerically, that it is no longer possible for Kamala Harris to overtake, Donald Trump in all of these states. You can see 96% there of Wisconsin in, for example. What we can see in Milwaukee, for example, there's still about 26% of the vote to come in. So it would arithmetically, numerically, just about be possible for Kamala Harris if she scored a, a particularly late surge in enough of these places to win. But we have to say that is highly unlikely. It isn't an especially probable outcome in any way, but we are just waiting. And I don't think it will be long now as more of those returns come in in state after the state for those final returns uh, to be made. I mean, I can see, I think, but what is far, far more likely, we can have a look at this, is to consider exactly where Donald Trump might get up to in terms of passing over the winning line. As I say, he's already on um, 266. Actually, if we put in Alaska, which is very likely, as I've just said, and Maine's second uh, district electoral college vote, that would take him over to 271. What is far more likely, frankly, is that he takes Michigan, takes him to 286. He takes Wisconsin, which gets him to 296. He takes Arizona, which takes him to 307. And then he takes Nevada, which takes him up to 313, which would actually better, would best his winning total of 2016, where he got 306 Electoral College votes. So he would be able to say that he'd beat his own record in terms of the Electoral College. He'd be able to say that he would become the first uh, Republican to win the popular vote since George W. Bush in 2004, a singular achievement, something that we know he had long coveted because obviously Democrats have long beat him over the head with the accusation that he was an illegitimate president in 2016 for not winning the popular vote. He'll be able to say that he's done that. He'll be able to say that he's won the Senate and will probably be able to keep the Senate even in the midterms of 2026. Such will be the cushion that the Republicans will enjoy and probably, although we won't be able to say for a little bit of time, will have taken the House. It is a Trump clean sweep, whichever way you look at it.